Um, just over seven years ago, the birth of a single powerful idea reshaped my life completely. That's when I ran my first ultra marathon. Not very far from here in South Florida, it was the Keys 100, a race that takes you from Key Largo to Key West over countless bridges, including a famous seven mile bridge, surrounded, running from island to island, surrounded by beautiful azure waters. As we all know, a marathon is 26.2 miles. An ultra marathon is anywhere beyond that, from 50 miles to 100 miles to 200 miles, and sometimes even further. The Keys 100, as its name suggests, is a 100 miler. Keep in mind that before this race, the longest I've ever ran was about six miles. And that was back when I was in middle school. So I trained about five months leading up to the event, not knowing what I was getting myself into, and certainly not knowing that ultra running would eventually become my life. Since then, since then I've run over 20 ultra marathons in some of the most beautiful environments the planet can offer. This picture is on a, a glaciers of Mont Blanc, the highest mountain in the Alps. This picture is from the golden dunes of the Sahara in Morocco. This is me, is, is me scaling the high desert of Utah. And this one is from the finish line at a beach in Monaco on the beautiful French coast. So far, the longest I've run was in Italy, from the city of Milan to the city of San Remo. It was 175 miles. That's like running seven marathons in a row, back to back to back. I am Italian, and that race was just like running through my backyard. I was born and raised in a, not very far from the area, in Taggia, a beautiful small town on the northwest coast of Italy. As you know, the Italians borrowed many things from the Greeks. And this concept of the marathon, which has its roots in, the class in classical Greece, is one of those things that I grew up believing to be the ultimate challenge, beyond which our bodies simply couldn't go. The marathon is one of the original events of the modern Olympic Games. It's a true feat of endurance and resilience a test of the limits of your physical potential. Now, turn the marathon into an ultra marathon, and the challenge goes beyond the physical. It becomes mental. And that's what fascinated me in the first place. It was absolute. It was inspiring. In a time where all lands have already been explored, all the high mountains already been tagged, and every corner of the globe already discovered, it seemed to me the only true exploration left was the exploration of the self, going into the depths of our mind and truly going beyond your physical limits. You probably all think that's crazy. Why would anyone want to do that? It is crazy. So what was the first step that I took? How did I get to the point where I would say, you know what, I'm gonna quit my job, complicate my life, jeopardize my marriage to commit and commit my life to being an ultra marathon runner. The story I want to share with you begins 10 years ago. I had moved across the ocean on my own to pursue my American dream. And I ended up here in Florida, in Miami. I was 24 years old at the time. It was a very exciting time in my life, filled with possibilities. I embraced the challenge as life laid ahead laid before me like an open road. Our decisions certainly shape our destiny. A week after being here, I was strolling down Ocean Drive, well, the famous Ocean Drive in South Beach, still in search of an apartment, and I got caught under a tropical rain. I dove into the first restaurant across the street, and there I got scouted by a renowned modeling agent, right on the spot. That day, I signed a contract, and my life took a turn I could have never imagined. The fashion, world, the fashion world opened doors to unique experiences that allowed me to cross paths with people I only seen in movies or magazines. 
Within a few years, modeling brought me to work relentlessly with some of the biggest brands in the industry between New York City, Milan, Miami. Between fancy shoots and runway walks, I dined with the socialites and lived what we Italians call la bella vita. I partied like a rock star. It felt glamorous. It was like a dream. Despite the big paychecks, though, well, despite the big paychecks and the relentless and the, and the seemingly endless celebration, I didn't feel fulfilled. I felt empty and at my lowest. Was this the vision of the American dream that I was looking for? It was a drifting time, and right then, I realized I wasn't happy with what I was doing, even less of who I was becoming. I was living in New York City at that time, and one cool spring night in that city that never sleeps, I found myself waking up from this dream of a life I never wanted. After yet another night spent at a private party in an exclusive hotel filled with bottles and celebrities, I walked home alone and then sat outside the window of my apartment. I let my feet dangle beneath me. I felt the cool air wake me up. And right there, I realized and understood that that life simply wasn't for me. I wanted freedom. I wanted adventure. So I began a journey of self-discovery to find out what truly called me. I did tons of research. I read piles and piles of books of adventurers, explorers of all kinds, from ocean rowers, big river swimmers, high mountain climbers, but none of those spoke, spoke to me. I was 27 years old, and as odd as it may sound, I was experiencing a massive midlife crisis. By chance, I stumbled upon a book, hanging off a shelf in a bookstore in Union Square. This runner, bursting out of the cover, caught me and drew me right in, opening my mind to a new world that I didn't even know existed. He wasn't talking about running. He was talking about something more. He was talking about ultra running, going beyond. I found his story compelling because he left the stereotypical dream of money equal, equals happiness behind. In pursuit of his passion, he found his voice. And he just so happened to be running extreme distances in extreme conditions. And I thought, that's it. And I was convinced to give it a try. The very next day, I bought a new pair of running shoes. And on the notes of journeys, don't stop believing, I started running loops in Central Park. The spark was ignited. I wanted to find out what happens beyond the physical limit. When the pain is so unbearable that the whole body tells you to stop. Let me tell you what it's like. Just two years ago, I decided to run the two most extreme races out there, from one extreme to the other, from the coldest to the hottest. In the middle of the winter, I will run the Yukon Arctic Ultra in freezing temperatures reaching 40 below zero. Then, later that summer, I will run the infamous bad water straight through Death Valley in temperatures nearing 130 degrees. I wanted to experience first person what it was like to put myself out there in the rawest of conditions on my own two feet across wild and extreme environments. So early that February, I flew into Whitehorse, a striving town at the edge of the Arctic Circle in, a, in frozen valleys of the Yukon Territory. A fascinating atmosphere straight out of Jack London's books. A vibrant outpost for the glory days of the gold rush and northern explorations. At 10 a.m., as the, the sun was just rising, we took off for an adventure of a lifetime. 80 runners, bikers, and Nordic skiers lined up for 100 miles of frozen lakes and open tundra. Fresh snow lay ahead as I pulled over 50 pounds of sled behind me with all the mandatory emergency and safety gear. The group fastly thinned down, and after the first marathon, I found myself completely alone into the wild. At 4 p.m., the sun set, knowing I would have to face over 18 hours of darkness. In a self-supported event like this, it meant I was not going to see anyone till the finish line the next morning. 
Only the consistent rhythm of my steps, cracking the frozen layer of the snowy trail to keep me company. My whole world evolved inside the cone of light beaming, beaming out of my forehead. Hours and hours of relentless movement necessary also to keep my body warm. Tracks of bisons, elks, and countless other animals were easy to spot as I moved deeper into the wilderness. Suddenly, right in the middle of the night, two shadows crossed fast right through the trail. At first, I wasn't quite sure what I saw, but to end all doubts, shortly after, a third presence came through, this time stopping right in the middle of my path. His big yellow eyes staring right back at me. The sled hit me in the, in the heels as I stopped in my tracks. I, was, I came face to face with a wolf. The majestic animal was as frightening as it was mystical, and moments so intense I will never forget. A thick silence filled the air, but somehow I felt like we spoke. I felt like we connected and understood that we were simply in different paths. I was, near, I was not there to interfere with him, and neither was he. So that big, white shadow kept going on his way, allowing me to continue my journey. As the sky was dancing green right above my head, I crossed that finish line. It was still dark as I reached that cabin lost in the middle of nowhere. For the last few hours, my corneas were frozen, and it felt like running underwater with a blurred vision. Three frostbitten toes and bird's stomach were a small price to pay to find that deep connection I'd been looking for. Not just within, but with the wild, unforgiving, and powerful nature that surrounded us. I knew I only had myself to count on, and that, in so many ways, is a very empowering. My life depended entirely and literally by the decisions I made out there. If I stopped, I would have frozen solid, but I had pushed beyond that safety zone and never felt so alive. Fast forward six months. Fast forward six months, and I found myself in Badwater Basin, the lowest point in the country, looking ahead to 135 miles of scorching road right through Death Valley, the hottest place on earth, all the way up to Mount Whitney, the highest point in the contiguous 48. Talk about extremes. Only 100, exper only 100 experienced ultra runners are selected from all around the world are selected each year. And that summer, I had the opportunity to test myself on what is considered the world's toughest, toughest foot race. Badwater 135 was the challenge I always dreamt of. So the gun went off and the field quickly spread out. The race had started at 11 p.m. at a cozy 120 degrees as we moved silently into the night. A crew vehicle is, is mandatory. Well, a crew vehicle and a team of support is mandatory for safety and to tend to all the runner's needs, including water, of course, as the sweating rate is so intense, the runners must, must get you to stomach up to two bottles each hour. After two hours into the race, and with an empty bottle in hand, I'm start, I started to, to peek for my vehicle among the other ones buzzing by. I'm starting to feel dehydrated, and somehow there is no sign of my crew. Another mile goes by, then another one, and yet my crew is nowhere to be seen. After almost an hour, finally, a familiar pa face pops out of the dark, and half incoherent and severely dehydrated, I crashed in the back seat of the van, trying to gather up and regain my strength. Somehow, they lost me in the night and took him a while to find me in the endless road. My stomach was upside down, my mind hallucinating, and my body was already cramping up. All right, I told myself, buckle up, you only have another 110 miles to go. Uh, despite that daunting thought, I was committed and determined to finish no matter what. That adventure has started much differently than what I envisioned, but I guess that's, that's the beauty of the adventure. You never know what is gonna happen. So I set out on a steady pace, and with a great deal of effort, I reached mile 100. 
I was making progress and happy the finish line was nearing. It was right then that my wheels completely fell off. I had dragged all night, then through the heat of the day, and now my body just couldn't move a step further. Strong waves of pain were cut right through my back as I realized I hadn't peed, peed since the day before. Um, my kidneys were just on fire. So I stopped, drank as much as I could, and forced myself to pee. The red liquid that came out left me speechless, and concerned for my health, I was uncertain of what to do next. Certain decisions define who we are, and as I sat in that van, in pain, watching other runners go by, I searched for motivation and inspiration. Why would I do this? Why was I willing to take so much discomfort? But then, like a lightning strike, I got up, hobbled across the road with stiff legs and putting one foot in front of the other. Eventually, I crawled across the finish line. I had accomplished what I set out to do. It wasn't pretty. I passed out several times in the process and probably pushed my body to extremes to tempt at fate. But one way or another, I did it. At this point, you might ask yourself what run until you pass out has to do with anything. Follow your dreams. We have all heard of that before. I'm not here to tell you it's possible. I'm here to tell you why it is necessary. It's only when we live an intentional life with purpose, doing what we love to do and being who we want to be that we find contentment within. We all have ambitions, but too often we're afraid to take chances. We're all afraid not to be good enough, strong enough, smart enough, whatever it is. We get bound by a perceived limitation, winding our minds in a cocoon of fear and tend to lose faith. But it is absolutely necessary to take the risk, overcome those fears and break free. In every, step, in every step we take into the unknown, we discover our strengths and our perseverance to reach those dreams. What we find out in the process is that we are all capable of a lot more than what we think we can. Only that way we evolve and strive towards a always better version of ourselves, a more driven, fulfilled, and grateful self. So... Whichever direction you may want to pursue in life, don't be afraid to take the full step. Believe in yourself and let your own journey begin. Thank you.